when you host somebody's luncheon for them and you host a team's luncheon for them, a kickoff luncheon for them, right? and the season doesn't go as expected, sometimes an, an owner can blame it on the host. <laughs> Or at least the host, or at least the host is genuinely concerned about it. I hosted this man's 2015 kickoff luncheon. They were fresh off of a, a conference championship game appearance. They went eight and eight. Yeah. So I could not be more thrilled that this gentleman would like to doesn't mind calling into this show after his team just went to nine and four with a big win in Vegas, hitting the point 44 times in Las Vegas, Nevada. Ooh, cool. He is the owner of the Indianapolis Colts, Jim Irsay, here on the Rich Eisen Show. How are you, Jim? Hey, Rich, what's going on? <laughs> I'm loving having here. How's everything in your world? Oh, everything's good. You know, we love to have you for that luncheon. And, yes. <laughs> and with good friend Chris Berman kind of being a little bit more quiet in the back landscape now, you know, <laughs> you're, you're that voice of the NFL that we all Thanks, uh, Jim. love and respect. And, and uh, I always say it's, it's hard. Find me one person that doesn't love Rich Eisen. I, you know, I still haven't. Had someone come up to me to find one, so so uh, we certainly appreciate all you do uh, for the NFL and 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 uh, all the, the the fun things you bring to the table on all your interviews, man. Thanks, Jim. It means the world, as you know. And I, I say it to any member of the NFL that um, you know I, I do take it as a a, uh, a privilege to do this job. Uh, certainly for our network, that's you know, my gosh, that started 17 years ago in our 18th season of NFL Network. And now um, your team, uh, if, let's talk a little bit of ball right here, if you don't mind, uh, before we turn to uh, a couple of things uh, off the field, including kicking the stigma, which is, I know, something near and dear to your heart and your organizations. Your team is at 9-4 and four right now, uh, Jim. How, how do you look at this team compared to other teams that you've seen in this position before? What do you think? Well, it's really exciting Rich, I, I, I tell you, it's always tough with the Monday uh, interviews. Uh, when you have them after games, you never know how the game's going to go. Right. So you always got to have the stiff upper lip and and be ready to to come on. But but I, I tell you, this team has been so impressive. Um, you know, really to go four and one in a playoff atmosphere um, over the last five weeks and it really has been that i mean when we beat the raiders yesterday they knew what was on the line as we did um almost a playoff game um right there at what was at stake and and uh you know both games with with tennessee were were huge battles and we split but beating green bay and, and houston they knew what was on the line they had a chance to run the table and jump back into this thing and and uh they fought so gallantly and and uh um you know as maradona said we had the hand of god come in on on uh, at the end of the goal line and knock that ball out somehow and uh um recover it you don't win many like that but uh it, it's been so exciting and i i think there's so many stories that go around it but um uh as far as the the changes and everything i i, I think obviously philip rivers um has been that 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 great leader that that you can't say enough about um, the professional, the competitor, uh, the selfless player that he is. How the guys rally around him, young and old, and um, he's just a special guy. And um, uh, he's meant a lot uh, to us this season. And he's playing hurt right now. There's no doubt about that. Uh, he doesn't like talking about it, but we in the media do. Um, and with his age and injury and already word that he's got a, a coaching gig waiting for him at the uh, prep level uh, in Alabama. Do you think this is Phillips one and only year with the Colts or are you already talking about maybe looking over the steering wheel at all, Jim? Well, I I'll, I'll say this. I, I mean, there's no guarantee there's going to be any surgery in the off season at this point. It's something that um, is being evaluated. Uh, um, it, it's not a definite, um, but but he's he's such a tough guy. I, I don't know how you play uh, six days after an ACL surgery on your knee, but uh, Philip did, and and um, uh, with the toe, everyone knows how tough that is um, for a quarterback. 
uh, driving the ball and that sort of thing. Um, uh, and really, I, 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 I could see us um, lined up the same way. It, you, you never know for sure, but uh, with, with Phillip and Jacoby uh, at, as a one-two punch, I, you have to give a lot of credit to Jacoby because he's been such a team player and he's come in and made some big plays on, on some special plays uh, in the red zone and short yardage and different things um, that, uh, I, you know, I, I could see us uh, rolling it one more time that direction. It, it just it just depends. I know that Chris Ballard and uh, Frank and I just have to talk at the end of the season, sit down and, and see where we're at there. But um, but we're really excited the way it's, it's going now, and we're really an ascending team. I, I I don't know if we could have won that Raider game in September. Um, I, I, I think we are still trying to figure out who we were and trying to figure out exactly who is going to settle into certain roles uh, for our football team. But when you have athletes uh, like Quentin Nelson popping out at left tackle and Naheem Himes doing the things he does in between uh, gymnastic flips of the end zone yes. and Kenny Moore who just, um, really, uh, just uh, all pro type of play uh, coming from him, and and um, so there, there's just a really lot of great news, including young guys like Pittman and and Taylor at running back, and and uh, we're just really excited though the way we're playing right now, and you know, 2021 isn't that far away, so. Um, uh, we'll see what happens in the off season. Yeah, you're referring to Kenny Moore's Odell-like interception right in front of Darren Waller. That was a crucial play in the uh, win for the Colts uh, in Vegas. I've got Jim Ursay, the the Colts owner and CEO, here on the Rich Eisen Show. When was the last time you spoke to Andrew Luck, sir? When was that? You know, it's it's been a couple months. Um, uh, really, um, uh, we've had contact within the organization. Uh, Frank is Frank Reg's talked to him. I know Ty talks to him. Anthony Costanzo. Um, so um, you know he he knows that our door is always open, um, and really it stands that way as an alumni player who we have so much respect for for what he's done for the franchise. I mean, this guy was special. He came in and and you know, things like the Kansas City playoff game when we were down 28 points and uh, one of the great playoff wins in history. Um, and uh, so so we just, we have great affection for him. And um, we're, we, we just want him to be uh, happy, Rich. We want him to have a fulfilling life um, and do what, what, you know, he really wants to do because this game is very demanding and you have to be all in. It's not a game you can play um, it, it, if you're not all in. And, and I think um, he made a courageous decision and decided, well, I think um, my direction needs to be apart from this game going forward. And as shocking as it was um, to all of us, including me, um, we respected it. No doubt. And, uh, you know, as we were talking just moments ago about looking over the steering wheel of 2021 at the quarterback position, the – do you think it would even be worth making a run at Andrew Luck, or you think that, that that's just not even worth the ask? Well, I do don't think? think we have to make a, a run at him. I, I think he knows that um, uh, we would always welcome him back with open arms. It's just that um, we respect his decision, and we, we don't want to um, you know, confuse the situation by constantly asking a question that he knows is there. And, um, uh, you know, he's retired. He knows what we think about him. Um, I know that, that Frank Reich and Chris Ballard had long conversations um, uh, on where we stand. And, 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 you know, sure, we'd welcome him back if he came back. But I, I don't think that's realistic. I, I know his dad well, Oliver. And his uncle Will, who's been his agent, his um, mom's brother, who's a great guy, and um, 
And, and so, so really, it, it's one of those situations where, um, it, it, again, you go intuitively where, where you think um, you try to figure out the answer more from an intuitive nature. And I just don't think um, that's in the cards for him to come back. But, but only he can decide that. I, I, I mean, only he knows. And he knows we'd welcome him back with open arms if he did. But um, uh, as you know, we can't, as a franchise, um, wait for that to happen. I, I think Chris and Frank and I have been very um, uh, disciplined in our thinking and saying, look at, you know, he's retired and we have to operate as such. And, and um, there, you know, you, uh, there's no time to be daydreaming on what ifs. Um, uh, if it happens, that, that's, that's great. But um, I, just don't, I just don't see that in the cards. But anything's possible. Indianapolis Colts owner and CEO Jim Irsay. A few more minutes left with with uh, with Jim here on the Rich Eisen Show. You mentioned Chris and Frank uh, several times, and why not? Hell of a team that you have uh, with your general manager and Chris Ballard, who's yoked. He's definitely yoked. Uh, that's one one aspect about him that I uh, I always notice whenever I'm around Chris. And also with uh, with uh, with Frank Reich, your your head coach. And I was talking moments ago about teams that are 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 feeling maybe bleak right now. Not really enjoying the position that they're in and how you never know. You just never know. I, I'm wondering, do you ever spend time thinking at any point in time, uh, and I'm about to ask you, uh, about that moment when Josh McDaniels told you I'm not coming and you might have sat there thinking, what now? And you look at your coach and what a what a gem you have. Jim, do you ever think about the, the way sometimes the football gods sometimes swing things in your favor like that? You know, all, all the time, I, I tell you, I, I've seen it for a half a century how things develop and, and, and um, you know, you, you just um, you, you think they're not developing, you know, for the right reason or they're developing against you when, in fact, um, something greater is, is being um, really drawn together to be presented to you uh, later. And you have to be ready to, to, to seek that opportunity. You know, really being a champion is one thing. It's overcoming adversity. It's the mindset, and everyone likes to talk about adversity. But unfortunately, words really don't do justice um, to what adversity really means at, at sometimes a level it can come to you, mm. um, such a competitive environment as the NFL. And um, uh, look, at you know, you just have to, be, be ready. I, I, I know um, with um, uh, getting Peyton Manning, I, I mean, Jake Plummer um, had a comeback uh, from a two-score sc- down situation with uh, three or four minutes left in the game and with less than 10 seconds um, flopped us from two to one, which allowed us to get Peyton uh, in 98. Um, so you just never know what what's gonna um twist that way and 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 you always try to um be ready for the future i remember uh when i traded chris chandler with tampa and they said you could have a uh a two this year or one next year and i said i'll take a one next year which was 92 and that ended up giving us the first two picks in the draft one and two uh in 92 which is um you know only the uh, first time really in modern football history. So, uh, so you just you, you try to be ready, and um, and when you get dealt a, a tough hand, um, that's really um, that's when you have to be a leader. That's when you have to have that determination that you will conquer uh, anything in front of you. All right, so let's talk, Jim Irsay, uh, about um, conquering uh, what's in front of you, uh, maybe being dealt a bad hand and karma. I'm talking about kicking the stigma. What's this about and how people can go to Colts.com to find out all about it? I'll give you the floor, Jim. Well, it's, it's something, Rich, that's really in, important um, to me, to, to my family, my daughters, um, in, in, in terms of really addressing um, the mental health stigma problem that exists uh, in this country. And I know... Um, uh, Ted Leonis was on talking to Wolf Blitzer about it a few weeks ago. And in this COVID environment, 
it is really, really prevalent. I mean, this is a all hands on deck, a crisis type of situation. And really the stigma that's attacked, you know, attacked with mental illnesses um, kill people. It literally kills people and destroys families because imagine Chuck Pagano when he had the cancer diagnosis, if he was uh, afraid, ashamed, or worried about some retribution from somewhere if he went to chemotherapy uh, to get well. I mean, that's what people with mental illnesses face, that, that they don't want to come out and be attached with that stigma. They don't want to be called crazy. They don't want to be called unemployable. They don't want to be pursued by, by um, a bureaucracy um, that they're, they're a wrongdoer in society or something. And, and, and it's killing people. And, and we have to, it, it's such a major situation in this country that we change the way that we approach mental health because people say with a mental illness, well, it's kind of like a disease. It's not like a disease. It is a disease. You don't choose it and you can't use your own will just to overcome it and beat it. I, I mean, you can't look at cancer and say, well, I have pancreatic cancer. I have the will because I'm so tough. I'm just going to beat it. It doesn't work that way. And, and it needs tremendous amount of support from a lot of people. And we're really trying to get that message out. I talked with my friends at REM and Mike Mills and I have been nice. friends for over 30 years. And, and we're using the song Everybody Hurts, which um, all the guys in the band uh, were gung-ho on, on using it uh, for the commercial. And um, so we're really excited about it. And we're looking to, to save some lives. Uh, you know, we've had owners in this league lose um, children um, family members through suicide um, and, and other many different avenues of uh, mental illnesses. And uh, we really want to change that uh, in this country going forward. And just go find uh, the Kicking the Stigma page on Colts.com for all the information that you can do. Again, Indiana loses one person by suicide every eight hours, and it is only getting worse in this in this pandemic that uh, I, I got to tell you, just flipping it back to football for a quick second here, Jim, the fact that we're sitting here getting ready to complete week 14, uh, um, to use the, the Gruden phrase, knock on wood, if you're with me, I mean, we're, 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 we're a few weeks away here. Is, is there, is there a plan to bubble up? Maybe are you guys talking uh, and, uh, and ladies in the NFL talking, is everyone talking together about maybe bubbling up for the playoffs in January where the players go to a hotel, say, uh, in downtown Indianapolis, and that's the way that they, they, they live until it's time to go to the Super Bowl, if you're so fortunate. Is that being discussed? Well, you know, we have an owner's meeting on um, Wednesday, um, Zoom-wise, and uh, I, I really think, Rich, it's been a tremendous, tremendous accomplishment um, a, as an industry to be able to go forward and and having played these games, our trainers, our coaches, our players, so many people have worked so hard um, to be able to get to this point. And I think in going forward, um, I, I, I could see more precautions being brought in, and we've even heightened those as of late. Um, I, I don't see a, a bubble situation where we would, end up at one part of the country right. and, and really play out of one stadium uh, or, or anything like that. But, but I think our diligence um, is being raised and, and we know um, every single day we have to work hard to um, o overcome the, these obstacles because um, right now, um, obviously in the country, uh, the COVID situation, the pandemic is, is raging hard, and it's not going to go away soon. The vaccine is is here almost, but that's going to take some time, so it's not going to prevent this year's Super Bowl and this end of the season the playoffs to be protected from a vaccine to, to the rescue. So, so we're ready to do everything we can, and we literally talk day to day, um, and we're ready, you know, ready to call an audible if we have to. Um, and, and we take it a day at a time to see how we can continue to be successful. Um, but I think it's a great story 
and it's been tremendous for the country and um, for the economic outlook in general um, to be able to play these games. Um, and uh, it, it's, it's something we're going to keep working hard um, to try to finish off with the Super Bowl in Tampa. All right. Well, uh, I appreciate the time, Jim. We had Jed York on a couple weeks ago. He said some members in the NFL, some owners had issues realizing they were on mute during these Zooms. So be careful. Um, just make sure, you know, you, you know what I mean? Just be careful. Well, it's, it's pretty funny. You know, you, 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 you all of a sudden you, you see your fellow owner and he's ambling around his house somewhere, <laughs> you know, he think it's on and, uh, you know, I'll keep those stories private, but, but, uh, you get a good laugh now and again. I've seen some good outfits, that's for sure. Uh, but, you know, hey, humor is the bridge to sanity, so we got to keep laughing, working hard, and, and be prayerful and spiritual as we move through this thing because, you know, I, I mean, hey, Rich, we're, we're not human beings having a spiritual experience. We're spiritual beings having a human experience. That's right. And, and different. So so we're, we're going to find a way and, and – uh, 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 we're going to keep working towards it, but, uh, you know, certainly appreciate the time. And, Always. Uh, Thank we're you. we excited about December, January coming up. Well, I'll be there on NFL Network every single uh, weekday or a weekend day that there's a there's a game, and I'll be there as best I can uh, to make sure that the uh, at least the ship with Mooch and Irv and Kurt are righted best we can. And um, congrats on that win in Vegas, and uh, good luck to your team moving forward. I appreciate the time, as always. Uh, Thanks so much, man. You too. Happy holidays. You too. That's Jim Ursay, CEO, owner, Indianapolis Colts. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.